Welcome back. So our guest this morning is an award-winning author and photographer, Lola Akimade Ekestrom. Uh, is, uh, she explores culture through food, tradition, and lifestyle for uh, high-profile publications like National Ge Geographic. And she's a traveler, and of course, uh, the BBC and The Guardian, amongst others as well. She's also the editor-in-chief of Slow Travel in Stockholm, Sweden. Her book, Due North, a collection of travel observations, reflections, and snapshots across colors, cultures, and continents is the book that we're looking at this morning. And I think it's really, really excellent. I went through this and it's absolutely exciting. You have an exciting life of travel, you know, I mean, paper, yes. <laughs> covering Europe, Asia, um, Africa, of course, uh, and the Americas. So talk to us. I mean, when I read the, the, the first pages in the book, where you were talking about your trip in Sicily and your encounter with the GPS and, and all of that. I just, you just basically took us there. Mm. So what you do with this book essentially is sort of like a description with pictures and then with words. Correct. How did this all come about? So the, the book is, uh, I wanted to take readers with me on the journeys and that's why I call kind of transparent ground level writing where I show you mm -hmm. so that you feel like you're right in there. And the reason I wanted to do this book is I've been working as a travel writer for about 11, 12 years now mm -hmm. and been traveling for so much longer. So I wanted to uh, create a collection of some of the stories that have been memorable experiences on the road, mm. kind of put them together and illustrate with some photos because I am a photographer yeah. and just make it just an all visual experience. And I thought it was excellent. Even the writing is really good. Thank you. I was like, okay, she's good. She's not bad. <laughs> now, uh, let's talk about the cover page yes. and um, this young boy from Peru. Yes. How did this go? There's a story behind this. Tell us, yes. tell us a yeah, story. Yes, so, um, and I'm sure I'm going to butcher the name of the village, but it's uh, <laughs> Coco <laughs> Yocolo. Um, yeah. But I was in uh, Peru. Uh, about to start the trek, the Inca Trail trek, mm -hmm. which is about a three day trek that ends at Machu Picchu. Yeah. And so we're at this village kind of spending some time with the ladies and the women there were, who are traditional weavers. Yeah. And I just saw this boy kind of just running, you know, just joyful, yeah. enjoying life. And I took the shot. And that moment of just kind of freeze framing in, um, is kind of what also inspires me to always have that kind of childlike look outlook mm -hmm. on life yeah. you know just to always never lose my childlike curiosity and, and joy and mm. optimism so that photo is one of my personal favorite photos yeah. because it kind of encapsulates all that yeah I, I i'm i'm very curious and i'm sure a lot of uh, the readers of this book will also be curious as well how someone who has a background in tech yes. you know information <laughs> systems then decided that you know what i don't want to do this um, i want to be a photographer and i also want to be a writer and then you just started on this journey correct Tell us how it happened. So um, geography has always been kind of my favorite subject. So even when I went to school and went to university and studied um, information systems, that's my, my background, I still minored in geography. And so a lot of my technical background was in geographic information systems, so programming maps, mm. interactive maps. Yeah. And I think it was 2002 was that deciding moment I said, you know what? I, I think I want to do this as a living was because I was volunteering with an expedition race yeah. in Fiji. And my job was to just kind of follow the athletes around, write stories, do interviews, take photos, write about Fiji and the places we were visiting. And when I came mm. back to my job as a programmer, I, I said, you know what? That was exciting. Yeah. I mean, I think there is, that was exciting. Yeah. I mean, I think there is something in this yeah. world. And so, over the years, I kind of started doing this on the side while I was still a programmer until I felt I had enough traction mm. to kind of just jump in full time. Yeah. And that, when I jumped in full time was in 2000, between 2007, 2009. Yeah. And you've done like really, really amazing work. I mean, with BBC, yes. uh, The Guardian and a, a bunch of other um, international uh, organizations. I think we have some clips uh, or some shots of uh, some of your work. If we can just take that the now. City in uh, KwaZulu Natal home of the Zulu nation. These people live a fast-paced 21st century life, yet many of them carry their traditions deep within them. I find that the traditional Zulu attire is so regal looking. Just the colors and the vibrancy, just beautiful. I traveled out of Durban to discover the Zulu way of life. I didn't realize how close the city is to the beautiful rolling hills of Hatland. I was excited to find people still living according to a proud, passionate heritage. 
not just respecting the old ways, but celebrating tradition joyously. I found people with an amazing zest for life. Flashes of color everywhere. I was swept up in the drama, the noise, the excitement of it all. I mean, every photographer lives for those moments. It's some Wow, so that's, that's a trip to KwaZulu-Natal in South yes. Africa. Tell us about that. Yeah, and so that was a collaboration between National Geographic and South African Tourism. And it, was a, it, it is an ongoing project called Through the Lens, where they work with different National Geographic photographers and send them to different parts of right. uh, South Africa based mm -hmm. on kind of their natural interests. Mm -hmm. And for me, my natural interest is exploring culture yeah. through food, tradition, and lifestyle. So we went to KwaZulu-Natal and did this one minute vignette that, that aired on National Geographic Channel. Uh, very nice. Now, yes. um, looking through the book, and you would, you would uh, notice that the book is divided into sections. Yes. And so let's talk about South, yes. <laughs> which is when you came back home to Nigeria. Yes. And of course, uh, you talked about your trips, you documented some, some of the things that went on in Lagos, yes. and you know, weddings, and you covered a number of other things. It's, there's never enough content when you come to Nigeria. Talk to us. Exactly, and, and you know, my heart you know, is here in Nigeria. I mean, I grew up in uh, Lagos, moved when I was 15. But what I wanted to do was bring people and put them beside me mm. to experience my Lagos, to see what it is like kind of navigating Lagos, yeah. that there is a method, you know, and there is <laughs> a, a method, method to, the, <laughs> to the madness. To the madness say. in Lagos, But yeah. there is just, it's just so vibrant, you know, and what's, are usually not even adequate yeah. sometimes to, to describe Lagos. And I like how you describe the, the, the back to sender bit. Yes. Where, so because I think you're in a unique position as, um, as a writer, not just a photographer, because a photographer just captures the moment yes. and then you put it out there and you leave the people to just you know, interpret what you, but you also capture the words and the sounds and all of that. So talk to us about back to sender. Yeah, and, and one of the things that, that I always tell people is, you have to show people what you're seeing mm. because the stories can tell themselves, right? You're just putting them down. So yeah. for example, if I said, oh, Lagos is a fascinating city. Fascinating is an empty word, it just covers. Yeah. But if I describe, you know, I'm sitting in traffic, there is a guy knocking on my window, like that gets the person into the story. Yeah. And so that's what we usually call kind of ground level transparent writing. Mm. And so that back to sender story, it's just describing what I see. Mm. And so you feel like you're already in the story sitting yes. right next to exactly. me. Exactly, I mean, that, of course you captured, you then reinforce that with photography. Yes. I saw the Keke Maras <laughs> and the yellow buses. I mean, once you see the pictures, you know, this is Lagos. Yes. There's no, uh, there's, there's the going around it. <laughs> so you did, so you started from North, went to South, yes. and then you did East. Yes. Talk to us about your, your, your trips in the East. So, um, so I've spent uh, some time in Asia, and I just got back uh, two weeks ago from Uzbekistan um, as oh, well. So, um, Uzbekistan, wow. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> I, so I do love, I mean, I, I, I do love to travel. And what I wanted to share with this book is me as almost an outsider looking in and showing you hmm. what I'm experiencing, but without, without any bias. Right. Because right. one of the things as a travel writer is, if we don't show a place as transparently as possible, we can start framing people's images and minds of a place mm, through right. our own words, with our own opinions. Mm. And sometimes it never does a place justice. And so that's why I really wanted, in this book, you know, I divided it to north, um, you know, west, east, and east was in Cambodia, and I also included a kind of Eastern European part of yeah, that yeah. Uh, reasoning. and. And just wanted to, ex you know, again, take the reader on a journey through these places as well, mm. you know, from Poland to Cambodia and, and stuff. So, so let's talk about freedom, because sometimes, you know, um, it's easier in some countries because they see a photographer, oh, okay, she's a photographer. Or you go to another country, maybe like when you went to Sicily and a number yes. of other places, oh, she's a tourist. Yes. And then they just let you take pictures. But some other countries are a bit more restrictive. Correct. So talk to us about the countries that were restricted. So, so there are some countries that are quite restrictive, but... It, I think it's up to the photographer to do their research, to mm. know, okay, what are the local laws around photography? Is exactly. It, is it sensitive? Some cultures don't think that photography is capturing their souls, you know? Exactly. So you exactly. want to be kind of uh, cognizant and sensitive about that. But there are some places that, even though it feels difficult at first, I always say people are people around the world. If you acknowledge them first, properly, mm. and ask for permission, they will let you in. You know, and, mm. and so that's one of the things I always tell people is, even though a situation or a place feels like, oh, I can't take photos there, have you, I, I always ask them, did you talk to the person? Did you actually ask them their name? Did mm. you spend time? 
showing them that you respect their work mm. because once you show people respect and you acknowledge them they'll let you in wow absolutely amazing i mean when, when i read through the book i was like look this is this is definitely i mean you you could see the passion in, in the person that who's writing and also you know of course like you said trying to capture it as dispassionately uh, as possible mm. now a lot of your trips were by the seaside you know so you were there was one where you were experiencing food seafood and, and all of that i can't remember what country I think that I was, was in croatia croatia i was in the fish market yes in, one, yeah yes. with the fishmongers yes, and, and yes. all of that so talk to us about that, that story so i Again, I, you know, I always say that there, maybe it's because I grew up on, you know, in Lagos and Lagos is surrounded by lots of water is there is something that draws me to kind of the fishing lifestyle. Mm. And I, I actually have a project right now, which is called Fishmongers, where I go around different fish markets of fishing communities around the world yeah. and document. But there is something about, there is something that forces you to get up at 4 a.m. to go out, mm. catch fish, bring it. And it's not just, oh, I have to walk, but there has to be some kind of passion. Mm. Maybe it's the stillness of the ocean or just at that time, it's just you and nature. Yeah. But there's something that I feel pushes, you know, fishermen and fisherwomen to get up that early. Yeah. Wow. And so it's part of that passion I like to wow. kind of Lola, capture. Wow, <laughs> Lola, due north, absolutely amazing. We're heading to uh, the kitchen now. I hope you can join yes, us. Yes, of course. Uh, talking Thank about you. food, because yeah. one of the things that you also uh, try to showcase in this, uh, in this lovely, fantastic book. Uh, let's uh, let's take a trip. Thank you. Welcome to the oh. kitchen. Welcome. Uh, please take a seat. Oh, thank you. So uh, she's traveled all around the world. She's <laughs> yeah. back home. She's uh -huh. probably she tastes tasted food all over the world too. Yeah, she has. Yeah, please, please have a seat. Welcome to the kitchen. This is thank Chef Affair of Sari's Pink nice Locations, <laughs> and she's made onion fried yams with hot chicken wings. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I've been chicken. smelling it from the couch. <laughs> right. <laughs> Please have a taste. Oh, thank you. And tell us what you think. There we go. I have to say, <clears throat> little secret, this is one of my favorite Nigerian. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Great. Fried yam. Yes, fried yam. Yes, right, yeah. Very nice. Excellent. Yes. All right, so while that is going on, we have to say a big thank you to our friends over at Homely NG for the kitchen accessories yes, on the show. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, uh, we have to give a big shout out to Fola at Fola's Place for styling my hair. And of course, we've had an amazing show today. Yes, we a have. A big shout out to everyone at TVC. Yeah. yeah. And the guys over in Creative for doing a great job. Mm. Everybody yes, loves you. Well yeah. Yes, you guys are amazing. And thanks well a lot for joining us today. Thank yes, you. indeed. We love you. We will be have back a great tomorrow. Day. Friday. 7 a.m. Don't forget. Bye. Bye. Bye.